Hello, hi everyone. So in the meantime, we're going to let every participant to come in. So we're going to start in a bit. Okay, welcome to this webinar, which is the title is a hundred a month of fortune in future. So this webinar will be conducted by Mr. Alwin Chu. He's a research analyst from FSM one. FSM one. So um, so so in for your information, this webinar is con uh, organized by Bursa Malaysia and in collaboration with uh, FSM Mond. So in this one hour session, so we would like to, we will going to introduce the method of regular saving plan and outline the futures and also benefit of um, regular saving plan as well as how um, in female investor could capitalize this method of investing to generate uh, future wealth. So before I start, let me share one of the contests that all uh, ladies out there can join. So be a hashtag superstar video contest and you can win 800 ringgit. So um, what you need to do, the first thing first, you need to film your own uh, one minute motivational video that title, what inspire you to invest. So you, what you need, you need to tell us a story that will going to invest, uh, inspire other people. So inspire out, uh, female out there to join us to invest. So how to participate in this contest? You just need to follow the simple step. Number one, what you need to do is that you need to create one min minute video title, what inspire you to invest, the one that I told you previously. So then second one, you need to upload your video on YouTube. And then the third one, you need to send the URL video to Bursa Malaysia, which is email to us, engage at bursamarketplace.com, which is bursamktplc.com before 6 January 2023, 11.59 p.m. So your video must be published and present, your video will be published and presented on the page within two working days from the date received. So the top five video with the most like will each receive 800 ringgit per each um, participant. So the terms and condition apply in this uh, contest. So next, before we start the webinar, let me read the disclaimer. So whatever we share in this uh, webinar is only the educational purpose only. So all example and view express, express are entirely the presenter owned. So the Bursa Malaysia and also the presenter will not accept any liability for the information provided during the presentation and in the presentation, in the presentation slides. Um, and also for any investment or trading decision made on the basis of this information. So before, before I start, uh, let me introduce uh, our speaker today, which is Mr. Alwin. So hi, Mr. Alwin. Great to have you here to educate a female out there. So I'm going to pass the slide. I, I'm going to pass the floor to you so you can start your uh, session now. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Shas. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Very good. Uh, good evening. Please just let me start sharing my slides. So yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Really appreciate uh, all of you for taking your time off your busy schedule to join me here today. I know that uh, some of you might just finish working or is having your dinner. So I'll try to make this session as uh, here as interesting as possible. I'll go at a very slow and relaxed pace and, uh, and not try, try not to be more very technical and stuff. So yeah, and, and also because uh, recent days people are quite 
attentions are, are quite tight because of the G15 and who will be possibly be the next PM, right? So yeah, without any further ado, let's kick, the, kick start our session. Uh, my name is Alvin and I'm the research analyst for FSM1 Malaysia. My topic for today will be 100 a month, uh, 100 a month of fortune in future. So this title may sound like fascinate or metaphoric, but it actually uh, uses a very basic method of investing, which is the dollar cost averaging. We think that uh, wealth can be created by setting aside some money for investment regularly. So people can have like very, very different dreams and living a wealthy, carefree life is many, many people's goal. But if we do not born in like a very wealthy family, more often or not, we, we have to depend on ourselves by working hard with good money management to achieve such goals. So every time after getting your hard earned salary, what would you do with the remaining amount after spending on like necessities, commitments, and also savings? Would you rather put it into the banks that as FDs, F fixed deposits, or spend it on luxury items or investing? In fact, investing uh, can be a very good option. You do not require a huge initial capital to start your investing journey. And believe me or not, with just a little amount on a regular basis, it will be able to bring you a great fortune for you in the future. So investing is a long-term game that will not will build wealth over time, which more often than not requires investing regularly. And experts have also agreed that setting aside some money for investment on a regular basis over time has the ability to make average people wealthy. So the basic concept here is uh, for making money through investments is to buy low and sell high. If we just look at this chart, if I were if I just buy here and then sell at the rate uh, rate circle here, buy here again and sell at the rate circle here, buy here again and sell here, buy here and sell here. The chances are I did make I did make a very a lot of profit from it already. But why even with such basic concepts? there are still so many people losing money in the stock market. Because in reality, in order to do so, this requires investors to time the market. But timing the market is a loser's game. One can never perfectly time the market, not even the famous Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio. If we just look at this uh, example here, like, where do you think investors or people will be comfortable to buy at which price? We all know that we should buy at uh, when the market is bottom, but in fact, there is no lowest point, but always a lower point. So uh, if for this example, if uh, most investors will perceive the IPO price at around this price as the bottom of the market. So uh, if investors buy it at this price, uh, as shown in the red line here, uh, investors will lose uh, around 64000 at the end of the, as you can see here. So looking at uh, another example, we see that share prices uh, were plunging fast. And if we were to catch the bottom, where will be investors be comfortable to buy at? Uh, if normally we see that this area would be the bottom, right? So people will wait for the price to get back to this level to buy it. But uh, so what happened next? The stock market rallied right after without, it, without hitting the bottom and investors who waited for bottom will end up missing the rally, which again shows that timing the market is a loser's game. So, uh, if, so if I, I was a new investor who do not have much time to monitor the movement of stock or timing the market, what is the best way I can do? So the dollar cost averaging is a method that most investors employ with many of them not even realizing it. What is dollar cost averaging and how can it benefit you? So assuming that uh, you inherit a large sum of money, uh, do you just lump sum invest in a stock market or make it or it make more sense to break the chunk into like smaller amount, uh, smaller amount and invest it over regular or regularly over time? So the dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy in which an investor place a fixed amount into an 
investment on a regular basis. It is a very popular method of investing that used by one of the most successful investors in the entire world, Warren Buffett. And the regular savings plan is one of the way that I describe dollar cost averaging. So basically, dollar cost averaging is about investing a fixed amount of money in a relevant stocks or index reg recurringly, regardless of the market conditions. This costs like few units are bought when prices are high, whereas small units are bought when prices are low. As a result, in a rising and like fluctuating market, the average cost of all the units can be lower than the average price during the same period. So this allows investors to profit from market dips by purchasing more shares when the price is lower without the nerves that some investors have often, uh, often have when they see that the price, the value of the investment dip. So over time, the accumulated sum at the end of the period will increase. For investors, basically just pick the, uh, some stocks and figure out how much you can afford to invest it and then just commit to it by buying shares at preset intervals. Like let's say once per month, like the at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month or in or even in the middle of the month. So and it is very simple as anyone who has a proper investment account can use this investing method. And some even have their accounts set up automatically uh, to, to, uh, to invest the money in a vehicle of choice it, when the money is deposited based on a predetermined schedule. So automating this will reduce the likelihood of panic when recession and turmoil are constant news headlines like where we are currently at. So the problem is that many small investors get scared when the market gets too volatile and sell off at the worst time possible uh, and just and then just start getting back again uh, when things are looking top toppy again. Th this is a common mistake when that we see during like every recession as well. The little people are panicking. The large institutional players are profiting by buying stocks at very, very cheap prices. Uh, Warren Buffett has also said that he made a large percentage of his fortune by taking advantage of discounted investments during the Great Recession and waiting for the prices to recover. So uh, a lot of people here might be asking, might be wondering, how much a hundred and month a month worth can be worth in the future? So let's see. Uh, let's start off with some of the basic assumption. So here we assume that uh, we you are starting with no savings at all. Your invest and your investments will earn a uh, basic for five percent uh, annually, and and you will be retired at around sixty years old. And so I'm here to show you about three different scenarios where you started investing in different age while holding other factors the same. For a woman, a young woman at 18 years old, if you stash away a, a hundred a month, a month, you will end up with around 170,000 ringgit by 60 years old. Assuming, just assuming that the, intra, uh, the annual, annual like return you get is around 5%. So uh, if you started like 25 years old, you will end up around 130,000 uh, by 60 years old. And if you start at 30 years old, stashing away 100 per month earns you around 83,000 uh, by 60 years old. So investing in a long period of time will let you take advantage of the power of compounding interest, which means not only you get returns uh, on the money you invested, but you also get the returns on top of the returns. So uh, regular saving plan is practiced by investors to invest a certain amount regularly. So it uses, and as I mentioned earlier, it uses the uh, concept of dollar cost averaging. So what are some features of the dollar cost averaging? First, the dollar cost averaging has very low entry requirement. So the minimum investment could be very, very low depending on the stock price. Next, there is no minimum participation, no lock-in period for this. So at any time, you may stop or talk, terminate your dollar cost averaging without any notice needed, and there is no cancellation fee. So unlike installment plan, investors do not need to feel burdened as there is no interest rate charge. Besides, the uh, dollar cost averaging offered allows you to make most out of the market highs and lows. 
And by practicing a disciplined, regular savings uh, investment contribution, you will be able to buy more when the price is low and buy less when the price is high. So uh, let's take a look at some of the real life examples on how dollar cost averaging can help you build wealth over time. The first example here we have uh, is Petronas Chemicals Group Bahad. So to make it like easily understandable and less confusing, let's just assume that we are able to invest 100 per month because in reality, Malaysia stocks are sold in like a board lot or odd lot. Normally investors will go for board lot, meaning that uh, they need to buy at least 100 units of shares if they don't want to pay a premium for buying an odd lot. So, and more often than not, buying a, sh a hundred shares uh, is more than 100 ringgit if prices per share is like more than uh, one ringgit per share. So, but to make it clearer and easier, let's assume that we are able to invest 100 per month into Petronas Chemicals from 2010 to 2022. And by the end of uh, the October 2022, we will end up with a total units of around 2,617, which translated into uh, 22,817. So by comparing to our total capital invested of 14,400, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, we will have a capital gain of around 58% while still receiving dividends every year. And in this case, we assume that we do not reinvest the dividends at all, meaning that we use it all, we, we use all up the dividends after we, getting, after we get the dividends. So, and then based on the latest filings uh, for 2022, the annual dividend for 2022 of the total capital invested is around 1,256 ringgit Malaysia. Instead, uh, alternatively, if we do not choose to invest, what will we do? We will uh, most probably be putting at in the FD, right? In the fixed deposits. So if we choose to invest in the fixed deposits for 2.9% uh, per annum, uh, I just briefly use the average of the past interest to get this number. So uh, I would end up with a total amount of around 17,200 ringgit Malaysia. And this is already assuming that the interests are compounded. And even so, the total amount I gain from the regular investment is still higher than putting it in FD. Next, we uh, the example here, we have a very renowned brand, uh, Maybank. Maybank can be considered as the icon for Malaysia stock exchange as it is the largest market capitalization stocks in Malaysia. And it is also one of the retail investors' most favorite blue chip stocks. So the same assumption, we, uh, with the same assumption, by investing 100 per month into Maybank from 1996 to 2022, and by the end of the October 2022, we will end up with a total unit of 12,300, which translated into 105,657. So comparing to our total capital invested of, of 31,500, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, we will, we will have a capital gain of around 235% in 26 years, while still receiving dividends every year without reinvesting such dividends earned every year. And uh, also based on the latest filings for 2022, the annual dividends for 2022 of the total capital invested is around 7,134. And imagine, just imagine that you're receiving 7,000 in a year without need to do anything, just by getting dividends 7,000 into the pocket each year, based on uh, the amount, the amount of 31,500 you, you invested. So uh, also if we choose if instead we choose to invest in FD for 2.9% per annum, we would end up a total of around 46,500. So although this is a huge amount, but if you compare to uh, the amount I get for investing in Maybank, right, it is nothing compared to, to what I have invested in Maybank. And even assuming that interest are already compounded and also the investing in Maybank, I don't even compound my dividends. Now, uh, here, let's see another example. DG, another family renowned brand who supplies your data plan, telecommunication networks, same thing. 
if we invest 100 per month into DG since like 1997, by the end of October 2022, we will end up with a total units of 87,500, which translated into like 30, 331,000. Uh, so by comparing to our total capital invested of around 29,900, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, we will have a capital gain of around 1,000% in 25 years while still receiving dividends each year without reinvesting such dividends. And also similarly, if uh, based on the latest filings for 2022, you'll be entitled for uh, an annual dividend of for 2022 of the total capital invested of around 11,400 ringgit Malaysia. Uh, and also similarly, if we instead we choose to invest in FD for 2.9% per annum, we will end up a total amount of 44,000. And also it's a huge amount, but it's nothing compared to if I just invest in DG, or even assuming that interest rates are compounded. Next here, we have Heineken Malaysia. Uh, so if we were to invest 100 per month into Heineken since 1996, and uh, by the end of, the, of October 2002, we will end up with a total units of 13,700, which translated into 316,000 ringgit Malaysia. This is uh, around 905% uh, gain, capital gain with uh, 31 per 31,500 ringgit Malaysia total capital invested while still, receiving extra, while still receiving extra dividend each year. And also uh, based on the latest filings for 2022, Heineken has been paying uh, very favorable dividends as the company delivered strong results with an annual dividend of for 2022 of the total capital invested of around 14,540. So meanwhile, uh, also, we, if we choose to invest the amount in FD for 2.9% per annum, we will end up a total amount of for, for, uh, 46,500. So yeah, so uh, it's still nothing compared to the amount I get from investing in the capital gain from Heineken. So the final example here we have is uh, Public Bank. Public Bank has been a very strong stock in the past and many and also many investors favorite stock. If we were to invest 100 per month into public banks since 1991, and by the end of October 2002, we will end up with a total units of 138,600, which translated into um, 619,000, with a total amount of capital invested of around 37,500. This shows a capital gain of 1,552% in 30 years while still receiving extra dividends each year. Based on the latest filings for 2002, Calorie Bank has been paying very favorable dividends. And the latest filings of dividends shows that the annual dividend for 2022 is around 21,700. On the other hand, if we were to invest in fixed deposits for the same period at 2.9% per annum, we will only end up with 60,180 with interest reinvested. So uh, after so many figures that I have shown, uh, let's relook at the example and what can we do with the figures or the amount of money earned. Let's get some, some views, some thoughts of it. So through, firstly, throughout the first 12 years, uh, of dollar cost averaging 100 per month into like Petronas Chemicals Group, uh, investors gain around 8,417 uh, without reinvesting the dividends. So, and this allow invest this amount like it's already worth for a ticket to Italy, for a flight ticket to Italy, for a round ticket. Yeah, you can come and go. So meanwhile, she can also like use the latest dividends for a four days, three night carnival cruise ticket one of the most luxurious cruise in the world. So for, as for Maybank, uh, investing in the past like 26 years, the capital gains, uh, uh, like you will be able to buy a Rolex, a Rolex uh, watch or even uh, with iPhone 14 Pro with the dividends you earn for the latest dividend only, just one year without doing anything, you get an iPhone 14 Pro with just the dividends Give by the Maybank. So uh, 
Next, the uh, dollar cost averaging in DG, investors can use the proceeds from the capital gain to buy like a decent unit of condominium, whilst while the latest dividends allow her to buy the uh, your favorite like luxury hand brand handbag. So uh, next, similarly with um, Heineken, you can be able to own a luxury car from the capital gain and also a famous luxury brand handbag also from the dividends. So, uh, and also for public bank, for the 31 years investing in public bank, investors can own a house um, through the capital gain and also use the proceeds to buy, uh, to buy some basic, to do some basic renovation for the house. Thus, uh, this shows that the power of dollar cost averaging and its ability to create wealth and fortune for investors with just a little contribution each month and on a recurring basis. And also, I would like to make a disclaimer that please be aware that all stocks that I mentioned earlier do not constitute any investment uh, recommendation and past performance do not guarantee future returns and investments do come with risk. So next, um, let's move on. So investors are constantly confronted with the questions whether you should lump sum or dollar cost averaging if you suddenly have a decent amount of money ready to invest, like you suddenly inherit a large sum of money or you suddenly hit, hit the lottery or some, somehow you get a large sum of money ready to invest. So before we get into this, we need to know some, what are some of the benefits of dollar cost averaging. First, uh, risk reduction. So dollar cost averaging avoids the disadvantage of the lump sum investing throughout the through the purchase of a security when its price is artificially inflated due to market sentiment, which result in the purchase price is lower than the, the received, uh, required quanti quantity of the, uh, the of the stocks. So when the secu security uh, of the the stock the price stocks, uh, the, sorry the stocks of the price of the stocks discovers its intrinsic value through a market correction or bubble burst, and investors' uh, portfolio will decline. And the declining market is often viewed as a very good buying opportunity. Hence, dollar cost averaging can significantly boost long-term portfolio return uh, and also when the market starts to rise. So next, discipline savings. So the strategy of adding money regularly to an investment account allows discipline savings as investors will build the habit of setting aside some money for investment on a monthly basis, rather than use it all up after receiving your salary. And uh, the last one here we have is to write out the market volatility. Investing a lump sum at the wrong time can be very, very risky, which can adversely affect a portfolio's value significantly. It is difficult to predict market swings. Hence, the dollar cost averaging a strategy will provide a smoothening of the cost of purchase, which can benefit to investors. Uh, in other words, dollar cost averaging saves investors from the psychological biases. Uh, because investors swings between fear and greed, and they, they are prone to make emotional trading uh, decision as market, uh, as market drops or market plunge, as market very volatile. So, however, if you are dollar cost averaging, you'll be able to buy, uh, you'll be buying when people are selling fearfully, scoring a nice price and potentially setting yourselves up for long-term gains. So the market tends to uh, go up over time in the long term and dollar cost averaging helps you to recognize that the stock market crash or bear market could be a great long-term investing opportunity rather than a threat. And yes, and, and yes if if there is any better time to use dollar cost averaging, now is the time. Because uh, if I were to give a title that best describes 2022, it will be nothing that I've ever seen before. And I believe that this same goes with uh, to investors all around the world. As the VIX index, uh, this, index uh, this index basically they tracks the uh, volatility of the S&P 500 index. So it shows that how volatile the market, the broad market is. So this index is, is remaining at a very elevated level throughout the year as shown in the circle here. As you can see, the average price, uh, the average of the index is way beyond 
previous years, and it, sh it is shown in a red line here, is, is the average of the index. So this shows that uh, people are panicking, worrying about all of the events that are, that are happening in this year. So uh, let's, uh, if we take a stroll down the memory lane and we look at some of the events that occurred in 2002 that has led us to where we are here today. So basically it all started in the beginning of the year where when the outbreak of the Russia and Ukraine war caught almost like everyone off guard as most people did not want or did not believe that there will be a large scale war in the 20th century. Like who still, who still engaged in a large scale war in like 2020, uh, the 20th century, right? So, but they were wrong. And the war in Ukraine will have amplified economic forces that are already, already shaping global recovery from the pandemic. And the war has further increased commodity prices and intensified supply chain disruptions, adding to inflation. Uh, so, and also noted, uh, notably, even before Russia invaded Ukraine, broad pri price pressures had already led central banks to tighten their monetary policy and indicate increasingly hawkish future stance. So the price of the crude oil almost hit a, a high of around 130 US dollar per barrel uh, earlier this year, hitting household and corporate balance sheet as well as consumptions. So this caused like inflationary pressure to creep up insanely, pushing like US inflation rate to a 40 years high. So moreover, um, with continued tight policies towards the real estate sector and possibility of more widespread lockdowns as part of the strict COVID zero policy, uh, international freight cost is increasing and as creates took longer time to get in and out of China. That's that has caused uh, China, which is the second largest economy in the entire world uh, in terms of GDP, to experience slow growth. And this impacts and the rest of the world as well because they are the major trading partner for most of the, like, most of the countries all around the world. Uh, and it includes Malaysia as well. So then the global recessionary fears woos as interest rates had risen sharply and asset price volatility had increased. So the prospect of higher borrowing costs has also increased the cost of extended uh, fiscal support. And these changes are occurringly very fast than, and faster than previous, what previously expected. So also two of the largest economy in the world, both US and China had recorded qu uh, quarterly GDP, negative quarterly GDP growth which uh, some people will say it as a technical recession. It is not totally entirely as uh, considered to be as a uh, recession because although we have recorded, uh, they have recorded like negative GDP growth, right? But the labor market are still re remains very strong and unemployment rate are still below the 5% of the target, uh, target by the Fed. So, so they are considered to be more like a more in like a technical recession. So uh, also like extreme weather all around the world in this year, especially have make things even worse with drought, extreme temperatures, floods, glacier, uh, lake outbursts, landslide, storm and wildfire popping up on news headlines more often uh, and causing high number of human deaths and economic damages. And we also feel it ourselves as uh, in Malaysia, right? In the past few months, we have experienced a lot of flood and especially in like Shalam, Kang Valley and also, in, and also in the other states, which affects like businesses and everything a lot. So with all these events happening one after another, this leaves global markets nothing but the volatility. And also on the local front, the Malaysian stock market faces like international aggression and domestic strife. Other than the global recessionary fears, Malaysia faces a lot of its own issues, especially the keenly awaited, uh, the keenly awaited G15 that took place last week, and all this uh, added further to volatility. And also, we expect more volatility in the coming months and days ahead, especially when there is currently there are still no, uh, we are still no clear direction on who will be the next PM, uh, prime minister, and also which party will will, will be sitting on the throne. So, yeah we expect more volatility moving ahead for the Malaysian market. So thus, uh, 
I will in the next few slides, I would like to highlight what, what can investors do to better this market volatility more smoothly. So this chart here uh, shows the year-to-date return as of uh, November, I think just last week. And for, for different stock exchanges, as you can see, uh, most stock exchanges were in the red, except for this uh, IBO Vespa, which is the stock exchange for Brazil, is in the positive territory uh, thanks to higher commodity prices. The index has taken that has taken the largest hit was nonetheless uh, Nasdaq, as tech companies' valuation was were hit badly uh, as interest rates higher interest rate, meaning that these stocks cannot command such high valuations anymore. And the Chinese stock exchange, both uh, China and Hong Kong, uh, as re represented by the CSI 300 and Hang Seng respectively, were among the top losers due to political hate means from the regulatory crackdown on education, tax, property, and also the uh, COVID-0 lockdown affecting industry output. So on the most right-hand side here in this, the, the final column here, you'll be able to see more stock exchanges in the positive territory after taking account into the fluctuation in currency. So uh, for an example, the Dow Jones the, uh, index, oh, even though it contracted around 8% year to date, but investors can still gain around 0.8% uh, as the US dollar has strengthened by quite a lot throughout the year. So um, let us dive into like how dollar cost averaging can help investors to weather through market volatility. First, uh, let, let, uh, let me throw you a question. Do you know that if an investment is down 50%, you need not 50%, but 100% to get back your initial capital? Uh, similarly, if your investment value is down 60%, some investors might, might think that, oh, uh, I think it's 120% because uh, of the previous example, 50 times 2 is equals 100%, and now 60 times 2 equals 120%. Uh, but actually, it is wrong. In fact, uh, investors will need 150% to break even. Uh, that's why, in order to recover your losses faster, investors will need to rely on dollar cost averaging. And dollar cost, the dollar cost averaging is a simple strategy that involves investing in the same fund or stock at different intervals. Investors can use the, use the dollar cost averaging during downturns by bringing down the average investment cost and speed up the recovery process. Let's say uh, for the first case of 50% uh, drawdown, investors were to dollar cost averaging it by buying the same amount invested. And the investment only needed to, to, buy, uh, to rebound by around 33.3% as shown here, to, for investors to break even as compared to 100% rebound needed earlier. And the 33% rebound is much more easier to achieve than 100% rebound. If investors dollar cost averaging into the 60% drawdown uh, of the same amount, and uh, the investment just needed to rebound by only 42.6% to break even instead of the 150% needed earlier. So this again shows that Low cost averaging during downturns is very effective in bringing down the average investment cost and speed up the recovery process. And this slide here shows the investment recovery time uh, table. So it, it shows that uh, for each percentage losses, how much return or rebound is needed to recover the losses. If we do not do anything, we will just leave it as well as how much return is needed if we dollar cost averaging it 30%, 50%, 100%, or even 125% of the initial amount that we put in. So uh, the larger the amount we dollar cost averaging it, the less return it needed to generate to break even. As you can see here, from portfolio losses, we have five percent, uh, negative 5% to a 95% drawdown. And how many percentage it needed to rebound uh, based on the different scenarios. So. Uh, during like 2022 or even any crisis in the past, right? A lot of stocks experienced like more than 50% of losses. So investors 
were to not do anything and just leave it, they did need to gain like at least 100% of rebound to break even. But with dollar cost averaging, the required return is much lesser and the dollar cost averaging of 125% of initial capital will leave only around 30% to break even. So uh, now let's do some back tests that the, this dollar cost averaging strategy using the past uh, past market downturns in Asian equities to illustrate the power of the dollar cost averaging. Let's say an investor uh, invested around 100,000 during the global financial crisis in May 2008 here, uh, the, uh, where the fall of Lehman Brother and AIG caused systematic impacts to the rest of the world. And the maximum drawdown at that time was around 47.5%. So if investors do not do anything, investors will need to wait until two years later at this point uh, that until they be to break even. So through, through dollar cost averaging 100% of the initial cost at this price, investors are able to recover their losses in less than one year in May 2009. Uh, now let's take a look at another example here, uh, another incident which is the China hard lending and circuit breaker where at that time, China's slowdown in growth is dragging other regions as well. The maximum drawdown is around negative 37.5%. If, um, if investors were to invest 100,000 from uh, in May 2015 here, they will need to wait until two years later in May 2017 to uh, recover their losses without dollar cost averaging. However, if they use the dollar cost averaging 100% in January 2016, investors are able to break even in August 2016, much faster than without dollar cost averaging. And lastly, uh, if investors invest 100,000 during the US-China trade war in January 2018, at a loss of around, uh, and DCA at a loss of around 21.5%, they'd be able to break even in March 2019. Here, uh, Instead, without this uh, dollar cost averaging, they will need to wait another like one and a half year to break even. Let's uh, see side by side breakdown. Using the public bank example from a year ago, uh, from earlier ago, if we invest uh, 4,700 into public bank in 2018 to 2021, either lump sum or monthly dollar cost averaging it of 100 ringgit. During this period, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a massive sell-off of stocks and the maximum drawdown was around 30, uh, negative 38.1%. And by the end of 2001, we end up with 4,842 for lump sum investment and 5,111 for dollar cost averaging uh, investments with a uh, same total capital invested of 4,700. So the return in percentage is 3% and 8.7% respectively. So this shows that dollar cost averaging is able to speed up recovery process. So why do I say dollar, the best method to invest in during volatile market is dollar cost averaging? Because hindsight bias is always there. Especially in volatile markets, dollar cost averaging help, can help investors to avoid big on paper loss, short term losses compared to if they invested all of their money at once on what happened to be the wrong day. You won't benefit from a full investment if you happen to invest in the bottom of the market, but you could also avoid buying all of your shares at the top just to only plunge into a bear market. Since we only know the best time to invest is in hindsight, dollar cost averaging helps to reduce the risk of extreme outcome, whether positive or negatively. So uh, here are some of the return differences between dollar cost averaging and lump sum during several market events for each stock. First, for public bank, you can see that the dollar cost averaging outperformed lump sum in mo almost all of the market-based events, especially during the dot-com bubble in the early 20th century. Meanwhile, uh, th for this, uh, this is the Maybank. With Maybank, as you can see, even during like huge drawdowns, the dollar cost averaging method recorded lesser drawdown, and some even generate positive return, like the during the dot-com bubble where it, it delivered like 2.8% return while, when the lump sum investment is down 20%. This also applies to Hennigan and DG Bahad as well, uh, where the dollar cost averaging method shows its ability to weather, better weather through market uncertainties in a volatile market. And also, I would like to make it make a disclaimer that please be aware that all of these stocks that I mentioned is uh, do not constitute any investment recommendations and past performance do not guarantee future returns. 
So here, um, I would like to share some of our house view on the outlook of, for some of the Malaysian uh, sectors. We like healthcare, especially in the hospital and pharmaceutical industry, because if you do notice, the budget allocation toward, uh, towards healthcare has been increasing in, the, in these few years. I think that uh, it is around like 36 billion ringgit Malaysia uh, and, uh, and around 3.7% uh, 3 billion rise from a year ago, showing that government is actually putting more and more attention towards this healthcare sector. Also, we expect more international patients as Malaysia is one of the top destinations for health tourism because of we have afford because of the affordable price and very, we have some very good doctors. However, we think that the glove counselors will still face a lot of headwinds due to weak uh, average selling price and also pile up inventories. Next for plantation, uh, we prefer, uh, we think that there are still a lot of headwinds such as labor shortages and also lower uh, crude palm oil prices and, for, uh, and also higher fertilizer costs. So as for the consumer products, we prefer consumer staples as compared to the consumer durables because, uh, because of the higher allocation towards the se this sector in budget 2023, more like uh, more and more cash allowances and more treaties to boost consumer spending. As for the transport, transportation and logistics sector, we slightly overweighted, not very, but just slightly, as it is, as we think that uh, this uh, the subsector, the petroleum and product shipping will benefit from higher like global oil demand, as their profit are actually they are more like driven by higher oil demand rather than higher oil prices. Meanwhile, uh, other subsector like will likely to suffer from like falling freight costs, falling international freight costs. So for like financials here, we think that the banking sector will benefit through rising rates through uh, higher net mar interest margins. Meanwhile, the insurance sector will also benefit in the long term due to Malaysia moving towards aging population. Uh, next, the construction sector. Although the budget 2023 feature a lot of construction projects, but they are they are more like toward the existing projects already, and some smaller size construction players will benefit from the new like small projects. So, however, we we were neutral because of the labor shortages, as the construction are very like foreign labor intensive and uh, rising building material costs. And also the extreme weather in Malaysia has caused floods in many areas, slowing down uh, construction projects, especially now we enter the, mo uh, the monsoon season. As for energy, right, uh, we are more towards like short-term gain, but long-term pain as the energy players in Malaysia are mostly like service providers. The benefit from, uh, they, they benefit from higher oil prices will be a little bit uh, lack and we expect it to be realized in the coming results. So however, uh, as the world pushes towards like clean renewable energies, we think that they will suffer in the long term. So as for the industrial products, we, we think that the rising costs will eat into their profit margins. Besides, we also owe underweight property because of the higher building material costs and also the lack of catalyst because after the home ownership uh, campaign implemented during the pandemic, right? There are no like any more ca new catalysts. And also we think that there is oversupply of property, especially for condominiums. And also the rising OPR rate will dampen like housing sales, uh, the demand loan growth as well. So for telecom, uh, telecommunications, we think that the consolidation of the two la uh, large telecom players, the DG and Cellcom will, will help reduce competition in the industry and boost profit margins. And also the new government for Malaysia, uh, whoever it will be, uh, they are likely to push towards uh, the rollout of the 5G. For the real estate investment trust, we they will likely to benefit from the re, uh, continue be benefit from the reopening play from higher take up rates in office rate and more visitors to malls uh, for as to boost retail rates as we enter the holiday season and with like Black Fridays, Christmas and also New Year and a lot a lot of like end of year sales. So uh, lastly, we have technology who faces short-term headwinds as the semiconductor industry is in a down cycle and inventory stocks are piling up. 
However, we think that the long-term growth drivers still remain intact, especially in the uh, artificial intelligence, electronic, uh, electric vehicles, and also the, the cloud space. So uh, as a whole, we cannot rule out the possibility of the headwinds, the near-term headwinds as Malaysia market faces political headwinds. We still hold positive on the overall outlook. So we advise investors to go for like political agnostic counters and avoid like sinful stocks and political related stocks while focus on good companies with healthy fundamentals in the respective sectors where we upgrade the above. So uh, all in all, here are some take key takeaways from this session. The stock market is no place for uh, to invest for quick returns. While dollar cost averaging can help to reduce the short-term impact of price swings on your performance, so consider focusing on the long-term goals you're investing for instead. So time, uh, actually time in the market is better than timing the market uh, over the long term. And history shows that the longer you stay invested in the stock market, the better your chances of making money. And investing in extreme market conditions is very, very difficult. And dollar cost averaging helps investors to stick to their plan when they have the capital to put to work. So yeah, with that, I would like to end my session to today. If there is any questions, I will take on. All right, thank you so much, Miss. Thank you so much, Mr. Alwin, for the great uh for the uh sessions and sharing sessions. So let me share my slide. Okay, let me stop sharing. Okay. <clears throat> So if you guys have any question, you may type your questions in the Q&A box. So I will read your question and pass to the speaker. All right, uh, for the first questions, um, I would like to ask for your advice in terms of um, investment advice for a young female graduates. So what do you think that um, for young female graduate that could, um, you know, capitalize all those methods that you are mentioned just now to invest so that they can generate a future wealth. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the question. So yeah, for young female graduate, uh, actually the, uh, for investment, we depend a lot on uh, your risk appetite. So for, red, uh, for young female uh, graduates who just graduated, we actually advise to go to, uh, to start uh, to start investing and then to go for like to go for dollar cost averaging and by regular savings plan throughout like each month they uh, setting aside some money for each month to generate future wealth and definitely for if they have a higher risk appetite they can go for like stocks like some good names uh, like maybe Maybank, Harvey Bank, all those good names can generate very Long considerable term. returns with uh, dividends each year. Yeah. Okay. How about uh, for the housewife? Uh, for housewife, right? Um, housewife, uh, they may not earn like anything by doing like house chores, right? So in fact, they are like, uh, some of them have like husbands who hand over their entire money save, uh, salary to their wives to take care of all of the house related expenses. Uh, however, they need to take into account that the, the presence of inflation has made it like necessary for all of those in savings to invest so that they have sufficient money when later when they need and they are, their purchase, purchasing power wouldn't be affected by the inflation. So the best case is if you are able to earn extra dividends each year, each quarter or year while being a full-time housewife just by setting aside some, some, uh, some money from the savings for investments each month. So, uh, for housewives, we think that uh, they can comfortably like do regular same plans in like unit trust or ETS, which is less riskier as they are very diversified and is managed by very professionals. So you, you are need not to worry about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for the answer. So next question. Uh, in your opinions, what is the best um, investment method for the female who working professionally? 
So um, similarly for for working individuals, working ladies especially, it will depend on their risk appetites at first. That there is a must, and also uh, let's use like age as a measure. So for uh, working ladies in their twenties, they have like better risk tolerance, so they can choose to go like a more risky options like stocks or bonds to and then uh but if um if even if for stocks right don't just like blindly buy into any stocks like don't be like hey i heard uh i heard a friend of mine or some other auntie uncle who, about this stocks and i just follow them uh to buy into it without doing any research so instead yeah, buy I into it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So instead, buy into like value stocks with good fundamentals and healthy balance sheets. So uh, on the other hand, uh, for working women who is near their uh close to their retirement age, we advise to consider like dollar cost averaging it, uh, using regular savings plans into like unit trusts or ETFs to generate like wealth as they are more stable and diversified. Of course, yeah. All right, thank you so much. And I will take that advice. Thank you so much, Mr. Alwin. So next, um, how about for the female retirement? So what is your investment or trading advice for that? Uh, for, in, for like, for like uh, retirees, right? We also uh, invest to go like more towards like very more safer options instead of a very aggressive option because uh, you are actually you you have you are spending your retirement savings to invest, right? So we do advise you go towards more like a safer options, like maybe uh ETFs or even bonds rather than going to stocks. Actually, yeah. So bond can actually generate very very considerable nice returns, especially in current environment where the interest rates are higher and then the bond yields are higher. So it, it will generate like uh quite considerable returns for investors. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I think that's all that will be the questions coming from the floor. So before I end uh, this session, so I would like to, you know, promote against our contest that we're going to have a contest for all the ladies out there. You can easily win it. What you need to do, first thing first, you need to create a one minute video that the title is what inspire you to invest. So if you would like to inspire other ladies out there, you can share your own story, what your inspiration on your uh, start, starting on investment. So what you need to do next is you need to upload your video on YouTube and then you can send the URL video to Bursa. Uh, you can email to the Bursa, which is engage at bursamarketplace.com, B-U-R-S-A-M-K-T-P-L-C.com. The deadline is 6 January 2023, 11.59 p.m. So your video will be published and presented on the, on the page within two working days from the date received. So the top five video with the most like will each uh, receive 800 ringgit each. So the term and the condition apply. All right, I think that's all. Thank you so much for all the uh, participants today for your willingness to join our webinar today. So thank you so much to Mr. Alwin for the uh, sharing session. So I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, take care everyone.